This is Pastor Ordain James from the Transformation Center in Tampa, Florida, and you're listening to Strength Strength Through the Word with Pastor Steve Myron. The whole purpose of this lesson is to show us that in life, both the good and the bad serve a purpose. And in many ways, sometimes the bad, though it might be very bad, serves a good purpose but the truth is you have to stick around with that one for you to see the goodness of it i mean when something is good from the get-go from the start you know it's good so obviously from a good starting you you expect it to be good in the end but the bad one you expect it to be bad and then bad in the end but some way and somehow god have a way of us working the good out of the bad. But then there is a bit of a fine print that we must read where that is concerned because the scripture tells us that we know that all things, notice, all things work together for the good. But then the fine print is to them that love God and are called according to his purpose. So the bad will work out bad for some. But God have a way of working out the bad good for his people. Amen, everybody. So tonight we want to look at discouragement, what it is, what it causes, and what are the benefits that we can derive from uh, being discouraged. My God, what good can come from discouragement? There is not. I mean, think about it. We pray for so many things, and just imagine, we pray against these things. We, 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 nobody wants to be discouraged. Nobody wants to feel broken or anything like that. However, as I said, the, the purpose of this lesson is to encourage you, to equip you, that this is a part of our walk with God and it is a must. Amen everybody. So let's look at the scenario. Elijah was in a position where he had a lot of zeal and commitment for God. And based on what he saw, Elijah thought it in his mind that he could have restored order to Israel. So after slaying all the prophets, I mean, maybe in his mind, he thought that there would have been a shift. Maybe Elijah probably thought that after doing that, he would probably hear that Ahab gave up the throne the next day. Maybe in his mind, he worked it out that by slaying the prophets, some order would be restored. But little did he know that a threat was coming his way. And so we see where Elijah being the chief of all the prophets. Remember now, Moses represents the law and Elijah represents all of the prophets. If you remember on the Mount of Transfiguration, it was Moses and who? Elijah that appeared to Jesus when he was transfigured. Now, this is telling us that Elijah did a big position. Praise God. But, when it came time for a threat, Elijah became fearful and he ran away. Let's go to verse 16. Hear you know what verse 16 says. For which cause we beg not, uh -huh. but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man be renewed day by day. So let's analyze that. The outward man perish, but the inward man, the what? Is renewed. So at the end of the day, another emphasis is being placed here on the fact that it's not about the physical. Because there are so many things that can happen to the physical body. A person who is healthy can just be going about their business and they can just throw. Next thing, one side of that person's body becomes paralyzed. Again, we have to understand since the reality that comes with the physical body. 
The emphasis cannot be placed on the old word. It has to be that we try to place emphasis on the inner man. And therefore, what do we do with the old word man? We clothe it, we feed it, it's whole, we put on clothes to make sure that it's not cold, if we are hot, we, you know, set the atmosphere so that we get, you know, warm and cool and whatever. We do so much to ensure that the outward man is protected, that the outward man is comfortable. But then we fail to realize that it is really about one's spirit. Are you with me, everybody? I look at even our dear sister, presently, Sister Teresa, that's in the hospital. When we first heard, I heard that, oh, she did one surgery. Then the next call, she did another surgery. And two surgeries, wow. Next call, she did another surgery. Then another call, another surgery. By the time here, it was about six or so surgeries the one woman did within less than one week. Then do this surgery and then they have to go correct something with them, they do and then something else come up. And it caused her, from the time that you have not been seen her, she has been in the hospital. Now, after having six surgeries, cutting up all over and inside her body, I called her today. Because that's, that's the real. You have people healthy and I go find out about their business. And then head can't lift up. Then head out of the way down. Then I walk around with all sorts of tears and all sorts of depression and all sorts of burden and you just can't see all the problems by them face. And this woman had over six major surgeries at any point in time during the surgeries. She could have caught a stroke, went into a coma, and don't wake up. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. But hearing her talk and the fact that her brethren from the church visited her, it boosts her spirit. So what she's doing, she's not even looking at the physical, the outer man that is suffering so much. I called her and I said to her, it's kind of redundant to say happy birthday. <laughs> Praise God. But just for the formality, because today is her birthday, just for the formality and to speak positivity in your spirit. I said, happy birthday. Am I talking to the church? So we understand now, thank you, we understand now that the emphasis says, cannot be placed on the old word. If we're hungry, my God, God can't get no praise. If we have any sort of issue whatsoever, God can't get no matter from it because of we lack half. But yet, the system, six surgeries. Get this? They are major surgeries. I don't know, man, I think major surgeries. But yet, she could encourage me when I spoke to her. Am I talking to the church? Fear causes this judgment. What is fear? There's an apprehension or an expectation of danger. It's like you just expect. Just something about the man. You hear some people go get the lay off. Are you worthless? It brings fear. Because now you start wondering, am I in that number? You hear a good man, praise God, start roam the streets of the community. You become fearful. Don't want to go to school. Don't want to go to work. There's somebody who you have to say something to, but then, because of what the person might say, you become fearful, and you start to become anxious. Fear causes discouragement. Because when fear kicks in, it allows you to not be able to progress, to move forward, they were there. 
Uh huh. Stop right there. You know what I'm They were in great fear. Watch this. Where no fear was. God had already taken care of the enemies of the children of Israel. But yet they were still walking around fearful of their dead enemies. That's what fear does. Because you can't progress. So they just stay in one place. Not knowing that the enemies are over yonder. The Lord already wiped them out already. Can you imagine? All because they did not want to progress. To move. Because they were in fear of an attack. They were in fear of losing their lives. They would have starved to death. While the Lord had already taken care of the enemies. Then was what the Lord asked the disciples when he came from sleeping and he was on the ship. Notice, he said, why are you so fearful? In other words, if you truly had confidence in me, then you would not be fearful. If one truly trusts God and have confidence in God, then there can be no fear Frustration is another one that cause discouragement. Anybody has ever been frustrated? Something does really get to you. Frustration really means to bring to nothing. It means, like I said, you have tried something and it's like it just now work out. So you just get frustrated. All the try and try. They yeah, do this over and over, and the result all the time is nothing. Think about Thomas Edison. The Thomas already said, Listen, he took about a thousand tries to make the light bulb by talking to the church. Imagine you get over with me and try, I try, I try to accomplish something, to invent something, and every time you try, it don't work. That's why I said, listen, this thing just not work, so let me just give it to him. But he kept on trying. And because he kept on trying, all of us today are benefiting from him not being frustrated. The frustration was there, but he did not allow it to come to him. Some of us, as soon as we try a couple times, we done. I would tell myself so three strikes. And yes, man. And we're done. We do it with our workplace. We do it in our marriages. And we do it in church. And you go through something more than one time. And some of us said the standard, you know. Maybe we go through something one time, but we never go through two times. We don't have no problem to go through things now. But I have a different things you make me go through God. Because God, if you make me go through the same thing five times. We don't that. I'm not talking to the church. So we set to a standard in terms of how, when, and where am I talking to the church? Let's read the, that's the first three words. For what? I want everybody to just consider. <laughs> just before we read the rest of it, I want everybody just to take those three words into consideration. For consider him, Jesus, the master, the king. No, notice this. Continue. Consider him. Uh huh. Now, if I don't say anything else tonight, you see this one verse? If you don't write down any other verse, make sure you write down this one. It says, consider before you give up. Before you throw the door, before you say you're tired and you're done. Before you say this don't make no sense. It said what? Consider him who endured what? Such country. Listen, you think how right, easy sitting to have knowledge and go in a place and hear people are trying to tell us the way I say around. And you know say right. 
Now notice this. The ones who are contradicting Jesus and other times they're wrong, I him give them knowledge. Mm -hmm. yeah. Am I talking to the church? Mm -hmm. The Bible says the foolishness of God is wiser than men. And them are trying to tell the creator of all things. So what you're saying wrong. He endured contradictions of sinners against himself. Less what? Remember always said this thing? Faith, it means less. We be what? Discourage in your minds. We have to learn to consider what Jesus went through. And if we consider what he went through before we throw in the towel, guess what? We would remember what he went through, what he endured. The scripture says he was in all points. God Almighty, tempted. You know how from the problem? Guess what? Jesus left from the problem too. Oh God, can I talk to the church? You think it was easy for him to be the head of one and family and history having to say that Joseph died at an early age? And just imagine, because Mary knew that he was special. Just imagine if Mary probably gave Jesus a little special treatment. James Vex. Judah, what are you thinking? Because he was the Lord. There was no issues of him. What is it? Because he was God. There was no sibling rivalry. What did the Bible say? Sibling rivalry did it. In family, go for him. And I say, maybe go for the mad boy. Give me the church. Bought him down and chat to people. Maybe go for him. The boy is mad. And I say, Jesus, mad. Captain, turn left, Captain, trip. Bought him a teacher. And he never got school. Talking to the church, he went through all these things. So therefore, no man can say God may go through something you never know, go through. No, he went through what you didn't go through. Yeah. So before you make that decision, say God, be done with you. Remember what he went through. Somebody lift your hands and give the Lord. So, hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Now, why is this important in terms of discouragement? One of the reasons why it is important to be discouraged, ironically, <laughs> I mean, I am telling you that being discouraged is a good thing. <laughs> but, but one of the importance of it is that it causes us to find joy in God and not in our circumstances. Sometimes we will find pleasure in our surroundings, in our environment, in our friends, and, and, in, and, and in the fact that we have good people around us. But many times we fail to realize that with all these things that God provides for us, we put him to the side. And we forget to have a little time with Jesus. Am I talking to the church? So he provides good friends, provides family, provides material things. I will put that. But when discouragement comes, sad to say, we cry back to who? Because when the host burn them, friend them turn them back, family are fighting over land, praise God. There's only one who will remember to turn to. So discouragement helps us to find joy in Him. It also reveals that we are not self-sufficient. When we fall into problems, it helps us to know that it's not about myself. What are the songs by myself? Oh, God Almighty. If we get so caught up in the me and the, and the so on, then we start to become self-reliant. Now we have to understand. Being self-reliant, you have to understand again, context. Because, you know, Depending on yourself and having ambition and so on, understand to an extent it's good. But when you reach the place where me not have somebody for nothing, and me not want nothing for nobody, and me can't do it, you can't live so. Hello, me not care who you be. You're not a rich man of our money. God wants to teach us that by ourselves we cannot do this thing. Everybody needs somebody at some point in time. Am I talking to the church? 
Everybody needs somebody in the corner. And so this is why God puts us through some situation. I've been through things already. But I said, we've been around our friend. Friend no good. And in many ways are true. We don't want no friend, we don't want nobody. We can't do this thing by myself until I realize God never made us to be by ourselves. Hello? God, when He was putting it in our DNA, He made us for us to be together. Proof? It was not good for the man. To be alone. Now take your mind off our wedding ring now. And that me a chat out. Let's look at the essence of what he said. It was not good. Man needed companionship. So it's, it's more than a wedding ring at this point in time. All we need somebody for reason with. That's why I love saying uh, young men and others from the church here. Man, what? It, it gives me joy. I don't know how I feel. When I hear someone, I don't know how to this song, I don't know how to talk, or I don't know how to wear it. It gives me joy on Sundays. When I see people in them little pockets, just, you know, I have them little conversations and so on. And I often tell the church, you know, listen, if you see somebody by themselves, always make it a point of your duty. If you don't just walk past people. But, but, but try and check on somebody. Find out if somebody has it. Find out if they eat. Find out what I want. Because sometimes you see people, listen, if they didn't show you around the bag, they said they don't have a walk with somebody with nobody. Am I talking to the church? Many times they're there and listen, not everybody, you know, not everybody is, how you would say, you know, have the social skills. You have people who are introverts, they're shy. Then now go come and say, be my friend, you know, they're not doing But they're well going to friendship. But they will never come and say that. So it takes somebody to show them I was, uh, listen, I broke for years here in this church. And I was, there's a sister here, um, I think Sister Wellington, she sits over there. She has been visiting us for quite some time now. Um, she sits right over there sometimes and she comes with her grandson. And so she said that listen, coming to this church, she said she's end up go seek up all the church people them on the road. And then pass her. And then call to her. <laughs> you know me as a pastor for you? Because I know church people down. <laughs> and I try the best lectures of the teacher better than that. Yeah, people here and they will jump up and down in the church and say for her tomorrow and they'll treat the lady and take faster. And the church said, no, don't call them. I'm talking to you all. The sister said, people try in that church, pass her up on road and call to her. To somebody you haven't known, but to she. I'm talking to you. Because how oh, you can go fellowship with me Sunday? But Monday morning, you kept past the bar road like you don't know who may be. I'm not talking to the church. And that's what we have to have. You know, social gatherings and so on. And that's how we do that now. Like, you know, what may be so over the years, sometimes, and I know they don't know you, they don't know you outside the hat and they jump it too. <laughs> some people, some of my church people, them, when we see them out and they never know no hat. Come here and stand down. It's like you want to ask my mother. You have a stand in a jacket too. You have some people who have a in a jeans man. See, I said, hold on, I'm surprised. See them in a sneaker. They say, whoa, wait. <laughs> because you're not used to it. That's why we have to have social gatherings. So we can come together and somebody can wear a jeans man. And wear a sneakers. And wear a normal shirt. I talk into the church. So we know one another. Are we talking to you all? So I gave you the symptoms of discouragement. I told you the, the, the purpose of discouragement. Now I'm going to just give you some pointers in terms of how to deal with discouragement. So in 1 Samuel 30 and verse 6, 
Let's read what this says. Was what? Uh huh. Uh huh. One of the first ways to deal with discouragement is to learn to encourage yourself. So here's this. I just told you a while ago that all of us need somebody, not you? Yeah. Or what if nobody not need? So this is why the first thing you have to learn to do is to encourage yourself. So David said, when my father yeah? Some of us, if nobody no come for encourage you in this church, I'm talking to the church. Then next thing you know, they hear say, Mr. Dana, I know loving them. They look kind. But I guess what? Everybody did that, it was just a deal. And you need to deal with you. But because you don't want somebody, because the truth is not. Spiritually, the Bible speaks of this, this way. The Bible says that many of us are what? Spiritual beings desire what? The sincere milk of the world. But there come a time when Paul said, listen, we don't have to drink milk no more. Or we can start eating meat. So the truth is sometimes physically, you remember we talk about the outward man and the inward man area? Alright, so sometimes in the outward man, no. But a man, and a real man, but then it has to be there. Like I'm going to go to Mandela as a witness. Um, look at Elisha. No, for them in that church, spiritually, as soon as they're feeling that they're out, they're walking around with dribble up, as soon as they're out. They look like happy people. They look like adults. But the truth is, as soon as they're walking around, and as soon as they're going to jump out, they're next. <laughs> Then you have to get them milk ready. And put in a demo and have them and shake them and wrap them. Some big, big baby in the church. Some of them in their fifties. Some of them in their no, 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 this is not about the physical. Not because somebody old means that they're mature. Not for them are still spiritual baby. The next thing to battle, discouragement, is read the Bible. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Read about it. Yeah. There's some promises that are, as a matter of fact, there are, are about 8,000 different promises that are in the scripture that applies to us in the church to be. That if, when we are discouraged, instead of going on Google and go, up on the streaming networks and go watch movie and go listen to some music. The truth is, Tasha Clubs, as much as you can sing, you need something more than Tasha Clubs. And I share one way every time she sings, she has a laugh. We we'll sing, she sings, Lord, I love you. <laughs> and she, praise God. Every song she sings, she laughs. You need more than a laughing singer. You need the word of God. No, for we don't have no time to follow me in the world. And all the encouragement by God Almighty. Anybody ever down in the pit yet and just take up your Bible and start reading? Yeah. All right, I with the Lord just start minister to you right. through His word. Oh God, we need to understand the importance of the word by talking to the church. But we find other things to do which is not really, nothing can substitute word of God. Because whatever the word of God says about me, I believe. And anything what the word of God says can happen, can happen. And anything what the word of God says can happen, will happen. Am I talking to the church? The Lord wants his people to know how to operate in these times. He never said discouragement now will come, but he's equipping you in terms of how to navigate. Because the truth is, part of our biggest problem to this day is because we lack patience. 
And somebody said, I need some of that patience. Look how long me are with. <laughs> you see the irony? Why don't you tell me something I have no patience? Look how long me are with. That's really what patience means. Patience means you don't complain about how long me are with. So for the fact that you are complaining, say, look how long. It means you're going to hang on patience. The man said, wait upon the Lord. Watch this. And be of good courage. Then the writer come in and say, I rushed out. He said, wait, I say. He made sure to that again. Upon the Lord. So saints, we have to learn to wait. Sister Dana Church, bring that come up on the first gate of them come and say, you know, sister, bring that come in and visa you know my gate. You need to go grab one man. You need to go grab one and bring them come and push it down in that pool. Make sure they baptize that you push it in by the finger. Am I talking to the church? Tell me, sister, man in that church. Go and go find one and come back. Am I talking to the church? The enemy tried to frustrate me in so many ways. I'm telling you, you know, not me say, single people are running on marriage. We are right. We just want to say, you run about them. Praise God. Let our witness. Let me tell you, you know, I say, marriage has its benefits and it has its good times. Why oh, when it's body bad? <laughs> when it's tough, it's tough. And then single people, we tell them all the while, who not always are. See that there, church. Oh, God. Look at them. They're just nice. They like that. Look at them, just that same color. And they don't look much. That time, then, you know, say, the man and the woman are most true fish because man don't wear a shirt. My wife attends a prayer. Because man, I like the color. And I want you to go to the house this morning. Then when you come in the church, oh my, that's what I want. I want that. I want a man like brother so and so. You know, so I want a sister like so and so. And you don't know. So right before they come in the church, I want big cuss for an outlet. So what I'm saying is that patience is what does this. And not because discouragements come. Mean that you have to give up on God, you have to give up on your marriage, you have to give up on your work. Right? God, you can imagine if every, which aspect of your life then when something bad don't come. But we have to learn to be consistent and persistent in whatever we are doing. Tonight, I encourage you, don't throw in the towel because things don't go bad. I want to encourage you. Let's wait, come on. God, I'm come to you now. God is going to open those impossible doors of sins. Oh God. Don't take me into the world in your spirit. Just be trusting God and know that He will work it all. So I saw that happening now because. They are spreading the same lies on me, not just the same. You know, when I saw both of them gone, I was sitting there in fear and I'm saying, all right, wonder what they will do to me now. Seeing that two gone, what will happen to me now? So um, that's where fear came in. And so I'm grateful for this lesson tonight to know, okay, then, you know, God is always there because by myself it won't work. So as long as I trust in God, then He will do the rest. I'm grateful for this. Yes, God. Yes, yes, yes. Um, tonight, Pastor, I really appreciate the fact that you touch on discouragement. You know, because we all, as Christians, we do go through discouragement. And um, I don't really have any question, but I just want to say what I've learned tonight. You know. Um, I am. I have been motivated tonight to um, to in the time of distress or discouragement and so forth to learn to read the word to learn how to um, learn the voice of God because a lot of us we hear things and then we always jump and say the spirit of God say this and say that because even during a time when I was going through some stuff and I heard some things and I. Um, and I was wondering why I'm hearing those voices, and I'm saying that's the voice of God. But two tools, it wasn't the voice of God, it was some evil, and you know, spirit speaks as well. Um,
like a voice in my head that saying, don't lie down here because like even in the house, gonna do something. I just hearing those voices in my head. And you know, and I started to have fear, I started to catch my friend. Sometimes I even go down at my mother's house, just leave out at my house, go down to my mother's house to sleep down here instead of my home. Sometimes even touch uh, the go down to touch the house and open her door and go in and lie down and everything. Just see, you know, just jutting up there at my house. I can't sleep at my house. So when I hear you talk about fear tonight, I say, my God, I've been going through all of this. You know, I just want to learn to trust God and to believe in God. Because praying is not easy. It's not easy. It's not easy. Because I'm going through all of this. Sometimes I would feel like I, I, I would just leave my house. I can't stay there two years. I just feel like I just leave and just go somewhere. Because I don't walk up and I'm not sure. They just leave me out of the house. Because I just can't stay here because of fear. So when I hear you talk about fear tonight, you know, I just feel encouraged. I said to myself, I was sitting here and I said to myself, God, I know me and God agree that it's because me and happy people just stay here. You can't, you can't, you can't make this continue to trust me. Trust me, no one. I have to do something about it. So I'm sorry to tell you.